um, my method for producing out a um, improvised song. So this song is not improvised, but I did not do it to a click track. And the same sort of thing would apply. I mean, in this case, I wrote down the lyrics and I sort of thought of the song ahead of time. But um, in most instances when I'm doing this these days, I'm literally making the song up in the spot using no click track. And I and Logic, um, I want to say I discovered it, but I mean, it's, it's, it's not like I discovered it. It's always been there. Um, but I just found, I sort of figured out how to use it properly. Um, this thing called apply region tempo to project. So the first thing you need to do, and I'm not sure why this step is there, but you right click, you go down to tempo, you say remove original recording tempo. That's a really important step. I don't know why exactly, but you have to do that first. So remove, okay. It's gonna, it might give you some things. Okay, so we removed the, the tempo information of which I don't really know what that means. But anyway, you have to do that step. I only learned that through trial and error. I did not find that online. Um, and then the next thing you do is go back to tempo and go to apply region tempo to project tempo. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You're just taking, it's gonna look at what the tempo is of the recording and it's going to take that and it's, you'll, well, you'll see what it does. The alternate that you could do is, is you could take, apply project tempo to region tempo. Um, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It takes, you know, this 120 BPM and tries to fit this, regardless of what tempo I recorded at, it'll try to fit that to 120, which is not what we want to do. We want to apply the tempo of the region to the tempo of the project. So we're going to click this. It's going to say, do you, um, want to align it to the nearest downbeat, we say yes, and we want to maintain relative positions of the other regions. I should say, you can see here, I have my vocals and I have my guitar, and all that means is that the vocals and the guitar are going to remain in the same spot to each other, which is, of course, what we want. Okay, so I'm going to hit apply. It's going to think for a second. Uh, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then if you click on this little doohickey here, you'll see it'll bring up the tempo information and lo and behold, this song that I did not record to a click, you know, uh, clearly, you know, it's in the 80s, it's in the 80s BPM. But what this means now is that, um, I mean, for my purposes, most of the time, the thing that I'm starting with um, and so this is just my workflow. Um, I just copy my guitar. Uh, I move them a little bit out of sync from each other so they sound richer. So they sound like more stereo field. I apply my quote unquote mastering to the track right away just so I can hear what that's gonna sound like. I don't think you can hear that yet. Wait a minute, I need to plug in the speakers. Okay, hang on. The speakers, gotta plug them in. I'm probably not gonna edit this at all, so you're gonna hear all the bits that I would normally edit out. You're just gonna hear everything. Okay, plugging this in. So you can hear it over the speakers. What What the heck I'm doing? Um, there's one speaker, two speakers. Okay. All right, so. Right, and so the first thing that you need to do is make sure that it's aligning to the downbeat correctly. So what I usually do is I turn on my click, um, which is up here. I bring this down and I look at like where the different tempo parts are. And you can sort of just get a sense of like what's what here. And usually the thing that I do when I start is I give myself a little <coughs> count in. It's never too late. And that's fine. Now sometimes you might find, sometimes what you might find is that your downbeat didn't actually align to the correct downbeat. For instance, you know, here's 11, here's 12. 
And sometimes you'll find that like it will have aligned here. And what you need to do to fix that is you can't just move, if you just move this, it's not gonna move the tempo data. So you have to do a thing where you select everything, make sure you select all with the tempo thing open, and then you can move it around where you need to where you need to get it. And so then what you would do is you just, all right, where's my downbeat? And you would make sure your downbeat's aligned. But our downbeat is aligned. Um, and so, you know, now you can do whatever you want. Now, now you can overlay lots of different stuff that's built into logic. You know, you could go into here to the loops and you could grab a beat of any kind. And these beats will now follow the tempo of the song because we've, we've, we've made the whole project be sort of slaved to the tempo that we, we did. Never too late to fix things up. Some... And so on and so forth. So, you know, you can do that and then just like, grab another one. It opens up a lot of possibilities in terms of um, getting the the raw feeling of something that's completely improvised, and then you can sort of go to town afterwards and start messing with it. I mean, you can do you could even um, do the kind of thing where you could add, you know, we could add another instrument. I frankly, I don't even know what key this song is in. I could like write a you know a keyboard part of some kind, and instead of having to play it over the whole song, I can just do the classic thing that I do during song a day and just like copy paste, copy paste, and it would still line up correctly. Um, so that's that's really the that's that's it. That's that's what I do. That's the main thing that I do to sort of get that make something more produced. You know, again, it's it's not the most um, you know, fancy way of doing things, but for song a day, and especially for an improvised thing, it keeps, it makes the improvised thing sound more interesting to me, and I, I sort of like it because it's like a halfway between putting in all the effort to produce a song, um, you know, which on a day like today I don't have the time, or versus I can just, I can just do this, and this is easy enough. Okay, so I think that's it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just using Logic's drummer, which is really, which is usually the thing that I start with. I find a drummer and a sound that I like. Never too late to fix things up. And the great thing about that is you can just like, I, I can just put in another one, change all the parameters, and, um, so. You get the idea. Okay, all right, man. Good luck with this, and do let me know if if you have any issues or questions about it. All right, love you, bye. Well, um, I sent that video to Yasha, and I think because this is my song a day song, I'll just talk about what I'm doing here, um, and you guys can, can watch it. So you saw everything that I've done up till now. Um, so the other thing I'm going to do right here is I'm going to make the verse and the chorus a little different by adding in, by having some guitar parts. And again, I only played the guitar once, and I'm only going to play the guitar once because I don't have a lot of time today. So I'm just going to make these guitars a little different from each other and again, move them a little out of the way from each other. You can see how they're, this is like, see this part in the waveform? It's like not quite lining up. 
And that just like, it's very subtle, but it makes them sound more, I don't know, to me it makes it sound more thicker, more thick, thicker. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna do with the vocals is I'm gonna, the main vocals we determined are in the key of A flat. So I've been doing this a lot lately, is just completely auto-tuning <laughs> my vocals. Um, so let's see. So this is what this is this is a fancy way of auto tuning vocals in in Logic. You can you can go into this view and you can see all the all your vocals um, laid out on the piano roll here. And uh, so over here we're going to quantize it to A flat because that's the key that we're in. And then I'm going to select all. I'm going to pitch correct it all the way. And now it's it's they've all gone straight to A flat. Oh right, I forgot a step. Shit, okay wait. So I have to re undo, undo, undo. Before before you can do that when you're using this um, tempo slaving thing, you can't actually mess with the pitch in that way until you do something called bounce in place. So we're gonna bounce these vocals in place which is gonna give us a stereo audio file. And it's gonna mute the original, and now we have this stereo version of it. Now this one, we can do the pitch. I, I'm not exactly sure why this works, but it does. So now we're gonna fix this, and then we're gonna go do the thing that we said before. We're gonna go down here, select all, pitch correct it. That like there's a little thing like this is not a good note. Not when you, that's better. When you have... See now this is like that little line means like oh like that's that little line going up is how off pitch the formant I think it's called I don't actually know I have no idea what I'm doing but anyway. reverb to this. So I make a bus and go over here to get my my reverb from waves and I'm gonna put um, like a short warm, warm slap on it. And so then right here the song gets quieter so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take away two of the guitars until the next chorus. We're gonna take them away. It's gonna get quieter. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two vocals. And the other one, this is like a workflow that I've just been doing a lot lately. It's just like, I really like just the way this sounds specifically. So I take two of the vocals, again, I do the same thing where I move them a little bit out of sync with each other, like this. Um, and the other thing I do is one of the vocals, it, it depends, it always changes which one I do. Like one is the main vocal and one is like what I call the delay vocal. And one of them is usually auto-tuned and the other one isn't, and it just depends. In this case, I'm gonna make the delay vocal not auto-tuned, so I'm taking off the auto-tune of, of the delay vocal. I'm adding a delay, and again, I'm gonna do this thing where I move it ever so slightly out of sync, so it just gives another little bit of, of color to it. Um, and then we add a delay, which is here. I don't love like the the phasing sound that happens, which is part, another part of why I. What you gotta do to fix things up. That's cool. Bring. Oh wait, and then during the verses, I'm gonna again. I'm gonna take. That's only gonna happen during the during the choruses. Fix things up. Wait. Wanna sit down, but I can't stay put. And that's where the chorus comes back. Never too late to fix. And then, so I, now I'm just gonna go through and do the task of um, 
removing these bits from the verses and letting them come back in in the choruses. Never too late to fix things up. So yeah, and do another one. Remove it. Oops. I'm blue. So it's not great yet. Um, we're gonna add some drums. I don't know exactly what we're gonna do, but let's see. Like I said, we're gonna find um, the sound that we like. Um, first I'll find a kit. I'm just gonna choose one sort of at random. Um, I'm gonna give it a huge compressor. This is just sort of what I like to do lately. Big old compressor. Blah. Just like really smashing it out. That's gonna be really loud. It's never too late to fix things up. And I've been I've been uh, raising the pitch and dampening all of my drums lately. Don't ask me why, this has just been a thing that I've been really into, really into, like just constantly doing this. Um, now we need to change the drummer. Um, so you keep settings when changing drummers, keep drum kit when changing drummers, and we're gonna try something a little weird. We're gonna just like see what happens when we go to this guy. I don't know. That's not what I had in mind, but it's kind of cool. It's never too late to fix things up. If something's not working, then you had enough. Grab that duct tape. So I'm hearing a lot of like wrong notes. Um, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna watch this really closely. It's never too late. sounds I wonder if there's like a, a chiller version of it let's see let's take away a bunch of the elements um. that's weird I don't know what that sound is okay wait what is that sound is that the oh that's cool I like it. And then here comes the verse. Is this that weird sound? Brain is it is. Oh my god. Why does it think that a snare is the. Okay, well, that's gonna present a, a problem. Let's see. Okay, wait. Suddenly, okay.
here I said the wrong lyric there. Clean things up. You know, I might add, there's a kind of, there's this drummer in here that I really like of these drum sounds. These 70s drums. I'm just grabbing random drum sounds. For the for the for the chorus, um, I'm just randomly grabbing drum parts. So we gotta go back to our thing of uh, fixing the the vocals. Um. I like how sort of weird it sounds. A little off kilter. So the other thing I'm going to add on the choruses that I always add is I'm going to add a bunch of harmonies. So See these two notes? They're just, they're wrong. They should be up here. Those fills. Those fills from here just sound so good. <laughs> I just like them. I don't know. Here, I'm going to add a different fill there. Oh, yeah, this is a good fill. You 
you can see as I'm going, I'm just sort of like fiddling with the drummer bits um, as I go, and that just keeps it fresh, makes everything change for different sections. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay, this part, wait, this part actually, I was thinking it needed to get bigger, but it actually needs to get smaller. So, let's see what we can do to make this part smaller, let's see. I think, I think, take this away. Yeah, that part doesn't need doesn't need drums. Okay, so then the only other thing we need to do until the song is done is uh, record some backup vocals. So we're gonna make a bunch of tracks. Um, got an audio track. And I have a I have a preset that I've made called called New Backup, which is my backup vocal preset. I make a bunch of tracks. I left and right them. Right the nail. Okay, and then, whoo, hear myself. Okay, so for this section, I'm not gonna be able to have, you're not gonna be able to hear the song. The next thing I'm gonna do is tediously go through and fix all of them because they are all very bad. Not bad. Basically, I just listen to it, and if there's anything like really glaring, I fix it. It's never too late to fix things up. It's thing. I think what I wanted to do is just stay on one note. Fine. It's never too late to fix things up. Mm -hmm. If something's not working, working when you had, you had enough, grab that duct tape. Get some glue, rearrange the furniture, do what you gotta do to fix things up. Uh -huh. It's never too late to fix things up. It's never too late. Never, never. I think like some of these first ones are actually completely wrong. Never too late. Never too late. Never too. It's never too late. Lay. Never too late. Lay. 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 It's never too late to fix things up. If something's not. Never, never do. It's 
It's never too late. Oh, I see what the problem is. We need to cut that. Yeah, that's right. And that needs to go up here, and that needs to be fixed. Too late to fix things up. Super at the moment, but okay. So I'm just gonna leave it, okay? Because I think it'll be better fresh. So I made these patty. Okay. All right. Um, I'll come out and do bedtime in just a minute. Bedtime. For the kids. It's for like five. Like, I know. We got an hour. Okay. Yeah, I haven't thought about what Jupy sh should have for dinner or something. You can have those chicken nuggets. Hubby anyway. keeps asking me for food and then not liking when I. I know. Them. She's been doing that all day. Anyway, I really want to work out, so I'm going to go do that. Okay, just leave the door open. And I'm, gonna, I'm doing laundry. If something's not working when, when you had enough, grab that dirt tape, get some glue, rearrange the furniture. A lot of interesting sounds in there. It's fine. It's never too late. Um, let's just bring everything in and see. We, uh, as you can see, we have no time. We have no time at all. To fix things up. If something's not working when you had enough. Good enough for what we're what we're gonna be able to do today, right now. Um, and now we just take take those and we copy them and we paste them where they go. But where do they go? They go there. Now these should line up. No, no. What I want to do is just. It's very simple. Oops.
Cool. Okay, that's basically it. I mean, I want to futz with this vocal a little bit. Never too late to fix things up. If something's not working when you had enough, grab that duct tape, get some blue. I think what I'm going to do is, is also add a uh, reverb to all these guys. Different reverb, maybe. Like a big warm plate. Rearrange the furniture. Do what you gotta do to fix things up. I would like to put something else in this these little instrumental sections. Maybe there's something very easy and quick I can do, like, I don't know, um, some kind of synth that'll just like add something to that little section. Like, uh, I have no idea, let's see. Alchemy. Mm. Leads. Something like that, I don't know. What you gotta do to fix things up. Let's see, what's the right way to do that? First of all, I'm gonna make sure I'm quantizing it. <laughs> like that. And what you gotta do to fix things up. What you gotta do to fix things up. Back our lead. But you gotta do to fix things up. But you gotta do to fix things up. But you gotta do to fix things Oops, <laughs> I was on the wrong, I was on the wrong bit. Go over here, bring this guy back. But you gotta do to fix things up. To fix things up.
You want more what? Go, you want more goldfish? Okay, I'll be right there. Okay, I think this is mostly done and I have to go feed my children and uh, next step is just going to be to, um, oh God, maybe I should show you that part too. I don't know. Uh, let's see. New project. The song is the 23rd, 20, wait, 23. Fix things up. Browse. Santa's evil twin was yesterday. Today is fix things up. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. New folder. Oh God damn it, 23. Fix things up. There we go. Okay. Next, we go here and we go into uh, materials. December. Um, fix things up. Go pictures. No, we go to da, 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 da. Um, image capture. Lumix. And this is today's right here. We import it. That's going to take a second. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we're going to go back and just do one last little. Shoulder hurts, so does my foot. Want to sit down, but I can't stay. Never too, never too late to fix things. Okay, all right. So, uh, i got to save this. Fix things up. Save it here. Great thing about Logic is that it will save this for you. So if this were to have quit on me, even though I didn't save it, the entire thing would have been fine. Um, so... And bounce this. Oops. Bounce as a AIF. And put it here. All right, and then as soon as this as soon as this is done bouncing and this is done importing, we'll take a look. In the meantime, I guess you can come with me, have some, and you'll uh, we'll get the kiddos some goldfish. You want goldfish? What else have you eaten? <sighs> goldfish. Okay. Let's see here. Goldfish. 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 I think you might have finished the goldfish, sweet pea. Pippi, do you want a graham cracker? Or cheddar bunnies? We're out of goldfish. You want cheddar bunnies? They're like the same thing. Here, look. Pippi, look. Here. They're the same thing. They're just, they're like goldfish. They're just cheddar bunnies. Okay. All right. Let's see how we're doing over here. All right. So we've, we've imported and we've exported and now we take, we go here, now we go to pictures, we move this into this folder. Mm -mm. It's getting chilly, I put on a sweatshirt. Um, yeah. 
It's a big file. How big is the video file? It's 3.9 gigs. That's, you know, that's a, that's a big file. It's not, it's not nothing to sneeze at. Um, yeah, and then all we're going to do is we're just going to bring it into this, we're just going to bring it into this, uh, into Premiere, bring bring the audio file, the video file, both into Premiere, and um, line them up, and export it, and then we'll be done. So here's the video file. Here's the audio file. Boop boop boop. Make them a little bigger, and I can see right where I started. You can see these like these four chunks right here chunk it up um, do 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 chunk 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 make sure they look like they're pretty aligned go back go back that's about it I think okay move this up here do 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 um, cut that out go to the end cut the end off set the endpoint Set the out point. Hope that it looks okay. It's never too late to fix things up. If something's not working when you had enough. Alright, that's good enough for me. I'm gonna export it. Put it here, fix things up, do do do, call it that, export, and that's it, we're done. Then just gotta upload it. Okay, well, hopefully. You'll want to watch this. <laughs> okay.